The guests go first uh, today for you, movie yes. reviews. You saw yeah. King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. Now, cause, so Ooh. we didn't have to. So first, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. And, uh, Steve was such an eager new guest. He was like texting, like, what should I see? And I was like, well, let's unload this bag of yeah. shit on him. <laughs> I saw that on the sheet. I'm like, "There's no." I don't think Graham went to see that. Unless, no for, some re- this. unless for some re- weird reason, Lindsay really wanted to see it. I don't think no, she really wanted to see it. No. So, and I actually, because I didn't, I wanted to come into the film with just a clear mind, you know, just like, I didn't want any, I didn't look, I didn't do any research about it. Oh, that's I, good. I was a fan of Guy Ritchie. I loved Rock and Roll. I loved Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. I loved Snatch. Uh, I loved the original animated series, the um, Sword in the Stone or the King Arthur oh, animated wow. series okay. way back when. I remember growing up and, and mm-hmm. really liking that. So I was kind of excited about the film, to be honest, and not, mm-hmm. and not knowing, you know, how it was being reviewed and how, you know, and that no one was going to see it. Um, <laughs> so when I got in, I was kind of excited. I, I was excited because I thought Guy Ritchie could bring, you know, His that master dialogue mm-hmm. that he has in those other films, you know, like Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels and Snatch. The dialogue is just off the charts. Right. So cool. And I was kind of like, oh, wow, and bring that to this. That would be, that would be pretty neat. And none of that. Re- there's none of that in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's all action. So he brought his Sherlock dialogue yeah. to yeah. the... Yeah, because those are real rapid-fire dialogue, too. It's really, Yeah, well, it's the, the whole movie's rapid-fire. I mean, yeah. it, King you, Arthur is like the same pace dialogue-wise as these other movies? Oh, like, I, I, get, I misunderstood what you said. I no, just want rapid-fire as far as like the storyline and how oh, fast okay. they right. moved everything through. Yeah, like, Snatch did that and Lock, Stock, and Yeah, Stills yeah, there was none of that. that. None of the yeah, rapid-fire cool dialogue. Could you even tell it was a Guy Ritchie film? Not really, to yeah. be honest. Not mm-hmm. really. No. I mean, it was cool looking, you know, like I saw it in 3D, which I think is if you're going to go do it, you might as well see it in 3D. Mm-hmm. Right. It is, it, it is cool, you know, Did visually. it have a dragon in it? No, there's a, the the best part of the movie I think visually visually wise is the in the, the beginning uh, battle scene when Camelot is being um, first attacked and it's his dad uh, Arthur's dad that's fighting him off or whatever and uh, they have these giant elephants oh. like that they're coming they, the the uh, enemy army is coming with these I mean the right. biggest elephants you've ever seen in your life mm-hmm. and uh, they're <laughs> not the real elephants think, but uh, <laughs> yeah those kind those like yeah I'll quote Ali fence. Those, uh, yeah. those giant ones. Yeah, and they're like knocking over bridges, uh-huh. running into the castle and knocking the walls down. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. That was cool. But the movie just moves so fast. You don't get any character development. You don't really mm-hmm. fall in love with any characters. And I was I was bored. I was well, it's, you know, the source it. material, uh, King Arthur, you know, there's not much to go on. You know, there's really... <laughs> it's not an yeah, interesting it's story. It's not an interesting story not... or interesting <laughs> characters or hasn't been around for very long. Yeah. You know, there's not a lot you can do with it. So. Yeah, yeah. I was excited, though. This is, you know, it reminds me of how I got into stand-up, you know, being on the slums of Minneapolis and on a, just on elf- the streets on an raised by prostitutes. <laughs> yeah. And went to an open mic where you had to pull the microphone out of the stand and yeah. <laughs> whoever could get the magical microphone out of the stand would be have a career in comedy. And I was the only one that night to pull it out of there. And I've been slaying comedy crowds ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Alive on state, guys, in yeah. iTunes right now. <laughs> Steve Gillespie. Um, well, let me ask you this. So so Charlie uh, Hoonam was in it, which yep. I l- very much liked him in Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, yeah. I was excited about him, too. And so how was he? He's a beautiful, beautiful man. He is a go- he's and a gorgeous really, man. Did, did, he do, did he do a lot of mumbling in this movie? A little bit. A yeah. little bit of that, mm-hmm. yeah. But they just never really gave him a chance to even be mm-hmm. a character. I mean, it's more mm-hmm. just him swinging a sword around and right. beating the shit out of people. Mm-hmm. And uh, I did read something cool about After him. After he um, gets out of the stone. Yeah, well, yeah. He, yeah. Well, even before that, because he's right. like fighting the streets. He's just like, oh, an orphan yeah. that just like beats everybody up oh. in the streets and steals money. Okay. And uh, so really, makes hangs you... out with prostitutes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So already really invested in the character. Yeah, Fantastic. yeah. So Jack the Ripper. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I did read something really cool about, kind of funny about him. So he was like really light going into the auditions for this film because he mm-hmm. had lost a bunch of weight for mm-hmm. his his character in Sons of Anarchy and uh, Guy Ritchie was afraid that he was too small for the character and he wanted a big buff character and he kept like kind of bringing that up in the uh, different auditions that they did and, and then I guess Charlie how do you say it? Hunan or Hunan? I can never pronounce it right. Hunan. Um, I guess he cornered Guy Ritchie and was like, listen, you know, I, you keep saying I'm too small for this role. Why don't you bring in the two other guys that you're thinking about for this role and, I, and we'll fight and whoever wins gets the part. 
I was like, bring him in here. I'll be the show. And then Guy Ritchie was like, all right, you got you, you got the part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need to beat up the two guys who aren't going to get it. Oh, yeah. yeah. That'd be awesome, though. Can you though? imagine if you yeah. were in a, in a casting session, you got in a fight, you lost, and you got a black eye and didn't get the part? Well, <laughs> it was going to, it literally was going to be Kit Harrington as Arthur and yeah. Joel uh, Kinnaman, Kinnaman as Lancelot, and, but they were seemed too unknown and probably, you know, too, yeah, not got tough their asses to beat up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kit Harrington. Yeah, yeah two unknown from uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah. So to, at the time, I guess maybe they thought he was. Uh, uh, too, it's an interesting yeah. thing. So so, Sons of Anarchy. Sounds like this was in production and development for a while. Yeah. Hmm. So maybe they shot this a while ago. Mm-hmm. Maybe Charlie Hunnam was like thinks that being in a fake TV biker gang makes him as tough as. The a character. Real, Is there yeah. a real, real, a real biker real gang guy? guy? Maybe it does. You don't know. Yeah. Maybe he also thinks he can uh, pilot robots and fight monsters. I think he could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the movie bombed. Yeah, I mean, as far that's, as it's that's like lost so a weird. Lot, a lot of yeah, money. Like when that trailer came out, I was just so surprised that no one went to see this movie. Oh yeah, yeah. it 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 was it had a hundred seventy five million dollar budget. It's opening weekend though. It did fifteen million. Yeah, that's oof. not that's good. That's solid. Yeah, that's you know, a solid yeah. profit. Guy I guess Ritchie it, is, uh, you know, with Sherlock Holmes and Man from Uncle, he's getting further and further away from why we like Guy Ritchie. Yeah, and this uh, didn't help. No. And uh, his next project, Aladdin. Really? The really? live action Aladdin. The live, live action. action. Yeah. What's he oh what's going God. on? Who who is going to Disney's going, all right. We needed a live action version of Aladdin. Get me the director of Snatch. Yeah, that makes yeah. no sense. Yeah. That's weird. It's really if you look at it it started with Sherlock Holmes in 09. He did that and two Sherlock two and eleven, a man from Uncle in fifteen. And prior to that, it was really cool movies. It was yeah, Lock Rock and Roller was great. Yeah. 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 I mean I didn't see your revolver. I didn't see that either, but yeah. Snatch was great. Yeah. And well, I guess it's really bombed in China, too, which is what they were really pushing it in China. Right. Which I've been reading a lot about just to prepare myself for this, um, like how the film industry is really pandering to China now because they are buying, you know, they're buying Huge stuff. amounts of money and yeah. huge amounts of movie theaters in China. Yeah. Well, but it's have... weird. Why would you ever think King Arthur would work in China? I mean, it's like a very Western story. I don't know. I'm Maybe they're surprised. thinking just the spectacle and the epic of like any type of summer movie will do well, you know, yeah, overseas. Yeah. And it's s- not the case. They're so trying to crack into that market because whatever, there's like f- whatever, four or 5,000 screens in America and there's something like 20,000. I don't know the exact number, but there's yeah, something yeah. insane because there's mm-hmm. 1.5 billion people there. Right. Yeah. And they like going to movies. Right. And they've <laughs> had this in the last 10, 15 years, they've had a middle class that was basically created out of their economy. So they have the money to go to the movies. But, and, everyone's desperately trying to get in there mm-hmm. and I'm sure they shot some of this in China. I'm sure there were some Chinese actors. There was. In it. There was a guy named George. His character's name was George and he was the, the one Chinese guy in the right. film and he was like the Kung Fu, the guy that like taught King Arthur how to fight. That was the Chinese ah. guy. Yeah. He so taught they, him Kung so Fu. They meant like a, he taught King Arthur Kung Fu. <laughs> yeah. That is yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. It's weird that no one went to see this movie. <laughs> how did it yeah. just not do well? Yeah. They're just rewriting history <laughs> and it's... Yeah. It's like, yeah, well, and then yeah. to get a movie into China, I've been reading. You have to get it approved by the government, like their censorship board. So there's like this whole thing where the, the United States film industry is really pandering to China, but also like right. censoring itself and changing storylines to fit, you know, what the Chinese would like and want to hear about themselves, which is really interesting when you think about. Now, it. did this movie did it follow any of the original story? Like, was there a Merlin? Was there, you know, was there anything else from the actual King Arthur? What's legend? a Merlin again? Yeah, <laughs> the wizard. <laughs> the wizard. Um, no, it was a, it was a, a woman. It was a, a witch. She had like a, like a, a mage. Morgan Le Fay. Uh, no, it was Astrid, Astrid Burgess Frisbee. Her name was. Yeah. So yeah, I think the answer is no. Nothing else was taken except the yeah, title. Yeah, from and it, they King had a Arthur, lot of like, like Legend of the Sword. Kind of trippy. Like she makes him um, to get him ready for his big battle at the end. She makes him hallucinate basically and like take a trip uh, where he's gonna see things he doesn't want to see, but he needs to see them. That's what she tells him. And she has like a snake bite him, so he po- like poisons him so that he has like a hallucin, you know, hallucinates and. Uh, that's the one part of the movie I thought was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Tom Wu played Snake bite trip. played George, uh, yeah. and he was in the movie Marco Polo, and uh, he was in Kick-Ass 2. Marco Polo was another sort of let's try to sell something in China movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, is, this, right. the, the, this trend well, somebody's is— Somebody's taking a write-down. 
it's they we've talked about this with Rick Myers before uh, and and this trying to crack into the Chinese market any big blockbuster yeah will suddenly have an element of well Iron Man had extra footage yeah like one of the Iron Man movies they actually shot extra footage just for the Chinese just release. for China yeah I've heard of that it'll have like a whole other storyline just mm-hmm. for China yeah they'll recut it they'll have completely different trailers they'll have mm-hmm. and part of the 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 laws of the Chinese government it has to be shot a certain amount in China, so they're forcing American companies to do some filming there mm-hmm. to infuse money into the economy. And so it's, it's also, I, I think there's rules about how much of the cast needs to be Chinese, things like that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's almost like, you know, it's similar to like Canadian productions. It's like, well, you want to shoot in Canada and get the tax breaks, you need to hire a certain amount of Canadian yeah. uh, talent. But it's even more so if you want to get distribution. Right. Like the, mm-hmm. the communist Chinese government picks. Well, they control everything. They control everything. <laughs> yeah. 